Zach is sticking so close. Little guy with freckles. So why wouldn't I want you on the carnival committee? Because I'm terrible at things like this. It's because they're having all the fun. It doesn't have to be like that. Yeah, sure it does. Come on, let's get in the race. I have to count. Besides, you don't want to race me. Why not? Because I'm good. Zach Gillette, he's in your class? Yeah. What do you know about him? He just moved here from New York. What do you know about his dad? He just moved here from New York, too. Could mom be out of Frosted Flakes and Pop-Tarts? Frosted Flakes are on the list. No one eats Pop-Tarts but you, Vincent, so I stopped buying them. Did you run out of food at your place, or did you just come here to spread sunshine? Donna likes to talk in the morning. I don't. And her snake stares at me. Snakes do not stare. They just can't blink. They don't have any eyelids. It's interesting, if unhelpful information. Well, maybe your sister can stop by the store this afternoon and pick up some groceries. Uh, no, not today. I got a committee meeting after school. Another one? I thought you did the jogathon. We did. Yeah. Well, I just thought it'd be fun to be on the carnival committee. I'll do the grocery shopping, Mom. Just give me the list. No, that's not a good idea. Why not? It just isn't, that's all. Mom, I have actually been to the grocery store since I was shot. The exact same grocery store, in fact. I like doing the marketing. It's fine. No, just give me the list. No, really. Just give me the damn list. Thank you. Sorry, I must have lost track of time. Well, that's okay. I guess I'll come back. Thank you. It'll only be a minute. No, we're through. We are? Yeah, I'll call you later. You're dark and it's full. I should get going. It's not all that complicated. I know why I'm depressed. They're rushing the publication of my book. Is that bad? It's going straight to paperback. But they're publishing it. I just expected this whole thing to feel different. You expected it to make you different? No. In our first session, we talked about your insomnia. Is that any better? Nope. What about your temper? I'm just irritable all the time. 
Vincent, do you know anything about post-traumatic stress disorder? No, I don't. Well, sometimes following a violent event, like being shot, people tend to exhibit certain behaviors. I don't have a disorder. I'm just having trouble moving on. It's only been a couple of months. Look, I got in the way of a bullet. That's it. It's not like I nearly died. Anyway, Lisa's the one that should be affected. Lisa? The one that I helped. You, you mean you saved? Don't try to turn me into a hero. Why? Because heroes wouldn't be published in paperback? That's good. That, that's very funny. Have you talked to Lisa since the shooting? No. Why would I? Just a question. Nothing's ever just a question. Your Honor, the state has charged juvenile defendant Dylan Shepard with the offense of manslaughter. We ask that the complaint against Dylan Shepard be dismissed, Your Honor. The complaint should never have been issued. He shook his five-month-old sister to death. We have his admission. And his mother's statement to investigators supports the complaint. He admitted shaking her, not to killing her. It was an accident, Your Honor. The autopsy report says that Molly Shepard died from massive intracranial bleeding and subdural and retinal hemorrhaging attributed to violent shaking. The death of Molly Shepard is a tragedy. It's a terrible tragedy, an accident for which Molly's parents have suffered, an accident for which young Dylan has suffered. With all due respect, Your Honor, bringing this case to trial benefits no one. The evidence is not sufficient, and the claim should be dismissed. Okay, uh, Mr. Shepard, I realize how painful this must be for you, but uh, would you tell me exactly what happened? I was home with Dylan and Molly alone. My husband was at work. Molly was in her crib. I asked Dylan, who was watching Rugrats, his favorite TV show, if he could watch his sister while I put the laundry in the dryer. As we live in an apartment, the laundry room is downstairs. So you left Dylan alone with Molly? Well, I wasn't gone more than three or four minutes. But when I came back and checked on the baby, she wasn't breathing. I called 911. I tried CPR, but it was too late. I'm sorry. Uh, what did Dylan say happened? He said Molly was crying and he couldn't hear Rugrats. Dylan told me he gave Molly a little shake and that she stopped crying. He didn't know that she was dead, I know that. When I explained to him that his baby sister wasn't going to wake up, he got scared and he thought something terrible was going to happen to him. And, and I told him that nothing terrible would happen, not as long as he told the truth. It was an accident. I know that he would never do anything to hurt her. You have to believe me, Your Honor. He would never, ever hurt her. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shepard. Uh, I must conclude that there is probable cause for the issuance of this complaint. So um, this matter stands for trial. Next case. Vincent? Lisa, hey, you remember me? Of course. What are you doing here? Um, well, I can ask you the same thing. Except that I work here. Right. What do you, what do, you do here? Oh, I'm a systems analyst. I interface with every department that shares the mainframe, and since we're also a major rooting hub, basically I analyze systems. I'd like to know more. No, you wouldn't. How did you find me? Um, the day of the accident, I, uh, I picked up the police report. Is that creepy? Sort of. You've been okay? Yeah. Um, no. No, me neither. Good. I, I mean, you, you know. No, no, yeah, I, I, I know. Do you, do you want to get together and, and uh, talk about how not okay we are? Yes, <laughs> I'd like that. Great. Jody, this is Miss Gray from the DCF. She'd like to talk to you. Hi, Jody. You probably don't remember me. It's been almost a year. He took me away from home, said I couldn't live there anymore. Well, it was more complicated than that, but um, fair enough. I retired after that. Well, more of a break, really. I thought maybe we could catch up, if that's all right. I understand you visited your mother and stepfather this weekend. 
I want to talk to you about that. Did your mother tell you that she'd filed something called a motion for custody with the court? Well, she said that soon I won't have to stay with the Tanners anymore. I might get to move back home. Well, the court will make that decision, but yes, that's what your mother's asking for. Now, Jody, do you remember why you were placed here with the Tanners? Because Mark hit me. Your, your stepfather. Did Mark ever do anything else to you? Anything you might remember since the last time we talked? He never did anything that made you feel scared or uncomfortable. Never, never did anything that, that you didn't understand. Jody, you understand that if the court says it's okay for you to go back home, Mark is going to be there too. And that's okay with you. I'm older now. I know how to take care of myself. Hey. Hi. I heard you joined the carnival committee. Yeah, yeah, well, I didn't have a choice. They were going to cancel the keep walk. I didn't. Nice save. Thanks. And what about you? Bye, Toss. That's a good gig. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess I'll uh, see you. Okay. Good gig. You know, I was thinking, if you're doing cakes, I'm doing pies, maybe we should get together and, and try out some desserts this weekend. Unless you're married, or, or seeing someone, then probably be a bad idea. Uh, no. No, it would not be a bad idea. I would like that. You would? Yeah. Well, great. I'll, uh, I'll call you. The time melts like icicles I guess that makes love so I'm Jody's attorney. She wants to go home. She's been very clear on that. I've spoken to the mother, the stepfather. Everybody's ready. This has always been the plan. It's a bad plan. We can't allow Jody to return home while the stepfather is still in the picture. Maxine, Mark Pruitt admits that he drank too much, that he beat Jody. Son of a bitch. No argument. But Jody never once said that he sexually molested her. I was the original worker on the case before I retired. How's that going, by the way? I interviewed Jody's teacher. On two occasions, she found Jody in the school bathroom undressing younger students. This was shortly after the stepfather moved into the house. The foster parents told me Jody masturbated regularly for the first few weeks she was with them. Maxine, I know. I've read all the files. Hank, she was nine at the time. Her psychologist said the behavior has stopped. What about the cause of the behavior? Will he stop? Maxine, nothing's changed. You have to introduce new evidence. Don't you think I'd like to? Do you know how frustrating it is to know something, to know it, and not be able to convince anyone else? I've seen a staggering number of sexual abuse cases in 28 years. You know how many of the victims volunteer that information. Because they've been threatened, or they feel guilty, or they're too young to give it a name. How can you report sexual abuse when you don't know what sex is? It's my job to recognize the symptoms. That's what I do. And you're never wrong. Not this time. Maxine, we're all overloaded with cases. We have to focus our time and energy on the ones that we at least have a prayer of winning. Jody wants to go home. That's the bottom line. When a young child is violently shaken and the unsupported head is whiplashed back and forth, the brain literally ricochets around inside the skull. That's why we try to warn people. Three shakes is all it takes. Dr. Sackman, uh, based on your evaluation of the evidence, were the injuries inflicted on Molly Shepard consistent with shaken baby syndrome? Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Yes, they were. 
In your medical opinion then, doctor, could an eight-year-old cause this kind of injury? It would take effort, but yes. Uh, could you be a little bit more specific, doctor? Um, to equal the amount of damage from shaking a baby, the infant would have to fall from a height of two stories up. That's the force a baby feels when shaken by an adult. However, an adult outweighs a baby by as much as 20 times. So a child, depending on size and strength, would have to shake much harder, much longer. Is it reasonable to assume then, doctor, that a shake of this kind would have to be deliberate and not accidental? Objection. Sustained. Doctor, what percentage of, of SBS cases do, do children or siblings account for? Less than 1%. In your medical opinion, would someone with Dylan's history and ADD have the strength to shake a body to death? Objection. Overruled. Yes. Thank you. This is nice. Yeah, I figured you could use a home-cooked meal. Probably eat out all the time. Not really. I'm uncomfortable in restaurants. Yeah, me too. Oh, all public places, really. I can't take loud movies these days. Noise in general just makes me crazy. Oh, anything violence out of the question. Are you afraid of tuna? No, I am good with mushy food. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, the uh, guy kind of choked me. He did some damage to my trachea, so it's hard to swallow. You have any trouble sleeping? And when I do fall asleep, I have these terrible nightmares. I feel like I should be getting past it. Everybody else has moved on. I haven't. I dream about you, too. I mean about you saving me. Well, I was just in the wrong place at the right time. I think if I'd seen that he had a gun, I probably would have run. Uh, but you didn't. You saved my life, Vincent. And I'll never forget that. How could I? I'm sorry Mark isn't here. He just ran out to pick up some paint. We want the room ready for Jody when she gets home. Yellow's her favorite color. Mrs. Pruitt, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I would like you to consider withdrawing your motion for custody. I think it would be a serious mistake for Jody to live with you and your husband. Jody's my daughter. She belongs with us, with the new baby. That's in foster family. Your daughter belongs where she's safe. She belongs where your husband can no longer molest her. We've been over this. Yes, we have. And Jody needs your help. I need your help. Please, you must be aware that things happened. Perhaps Jody said something. How dare you? How dare you suggest I'd allow something like that to happen to my own child? That my husband... Denise, it's okay. Miss Gray, right? Yes? If I did what you're suggesting, why does Jody want to come home? Why does she want to live here? You may not believe this, but I appreciate what you're trying to do. That you care. I let her down. We both did. Mostly me. I was stupid and cruel. I, I drank too much and Jody suffered for it. Yes, she did. You were right to take her away. But I'm not that person anymore. I'm an AA. I haven't had a drink in 14 months. We're both in counseling. We've done everything the court asked. Now we just want Jody back. My wife has forgiven me. So has Jody. Isn't that enough? Neglect petition. Mother is prepared to surrender rights. All right. Well, let's go. Dr. Judge Gray. Uh, Donna? Are you seeing someone? Excuse me? You're glowing. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, yeah. You are. Donna? I'm not glowing. Sorry. for the Honorable Amy Madison Gray. Be seated. All right. Uh, let's begin. Counsel? Uh, who, who's counsel? Your Honor, I'd like to apologize to you. You. You.
You didn't tell me you were a lawyer. You didn't tell me you were a judge. Well, I, I, was, uh, I was saving it for a date. Well, I wanted to impress you. Would have worked. About that, are we, are we still on for this week? No. How, how can we? It's a conflict. You can always recuse yourself. Just this once. Might find out you hate me. Yeah, that's true. And that wouldn't be a conflict. <laughs> no, I'm not going to hate you. Damn. No, you're, you're, a, uh, you're a child advocate attorney. You're going to be in my courtroom a lot. Just, then I can't always recuse myself. Then don't. Disclose to both parties on the record that we have a social relationship. Assure them that it won't prejudice your ruling. Yeah, would you believe that if you were the opposing counsel? No. So, what do we do? How could she be a doctor? Miss Gray, have you read the entire case status report that was prepared for this court? Yes, I have. And what are your opinions concerning reunification? Is it in Jody's best interest? No, it's my opinion that Jody's stepfather, Mark Pruitt, has sexually molested her. Objection. And will do so again if we fail in our duty to protect her. <sighs> Your Honor, there's already been an abuse trial where these issues were raised. Nothing came of them. Ms. Gray, it should come as no surprise to you that you're not the only one who has read the case status report. No, Your Honor. Yes, well, it clearly states that the young girl has repeatedly denied that she was ever sexually molested by Mr. Pruitt. When I first met Jody, she also denied that Mr. Pruitt was beating her repeatedly with a belt. She was not telling the truth. I recognized this because I could see the welts and bruises, the physical scars. It was not until Mr. Pruitt admitted what he had done that Jody felt secure enough not to lie. Sexual abuse also leaves scars. They may not be physical, they may be more difficult to see. But they're there if you know where to look, and Jody Larson has them. So you're referring to the incidents of uh, disruptive behavior, masturbation, the fondling of younger schoolmates? That is correct. 38% of all of the women in this country are sexually molested in childhood. That's more than one in three. Most of them go for years without telling anyone because they are afraid or ashamed or have blocked the memory completely. I don't believe that children should be made to suffer because they're afraid to tell the truth. Well, this court appreciates your concern for children, Miss Gray. I asked Jody if she was afraid that her stepfather would hurt her again. She said, I'm older now. I know how to take care of myself. This is a 10-year-old girl. 10-year-old children cannot take care of themselves. They need their parents. But if their parents betray them, they need us. Your Honor. So you're going to recuse yourself? Yep. I see. What? Nothing. Bruce, if you have a question, you can just come out and ask it. I don't want to ask a question. Yeah, right. You have absolutely no interest in the nature of my relationship with Mr. Gillette. That's right. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. It's none of my business. Oh, you're afraid that if you ask me about my business, then I'll ask you about yours. No, because that's not the nature of our relationship. You know what, Bruce? Some people who work together actually talk about things besides work. Uh, well, we don't. Well, you don't. I do. You never tell me anything. Her name is Mia. Mia? That's what you want to know, isn't it? The one I was talking to in here? Mia's my daughter's mother. Mia's a pretty name. Well, we were young when we met. Had a baby. Mia wasn't ready for responsibility. She said she had things she wanted to do first. Wanted a career. Went to France, became a model. Now she's back. Said she wants to try and become a family. How do you feel about that? I carried a torch for a long time. Didn't expect this day to come, though. So, how do you feel about Mr. Gillette? Well, he's a lawyer. I'm a judge. It's probably best I don't feel anything. Doesn't really help to talk, does it? It's Lisa again. I know you're busy. I just wanted to say that I'll return the favor and make you lunch next time. Um, call me. In case you've lost my number, it's 555-0176. Talk to you soon, I hope. And, Vincent, well, never mind. Call me. My mom is making dinner and doing the laundry. I was watching Rugrats, my favorite TV show. 
My mom asked me to watch my sister Molly while she put the laundry in the dryer. Molly was crying. I was trying to watch TV. I asked her to be quiet. She wouldn't be quiet. So I shook her. Where was your sister doing when you shook her? In her crib. And how did you shake her? Can you show me? Dylan, how did you reach into the crib? Excuse me? Did you reach um, in from the side like this? Or did you reach down into the crib from above? My mom asked me to watch my sister, Molly, while she put the laundry in the dryer. Molly was crying. I was trying to watch TV. I asked her to be quiet. She wouldn't be quiet. So I shook her in the crib. Right, right, you said that. But, but you're just a boy, and, and you're not that tall, so I'm just trying to get a picture. Did you reach in from the side, or did you stand up on something and, and reach down from above? I forgot. You forgot? Your Honor, we'd like to request a recess. Yeah, this court's in recess until tomorrow morning. Counsel, I'd like to see you in my chambers. You're going to try and tell me that boy hasn't been coached. That's his story, Your Honor. It is totally consistent with the statement he made to the police. Consistent? Yeah, I've read this. It's verbatim. It's almost nearly identical to the mother's account. Which speaks to its veracity. Or to the level of rehearsal. I think he's covering for one of his parents. Dylan admitted to the crime, Your Honor. I'm well aware of that. I'll have my verdict tomorrow. So what are you going to do? Even if one of the parents did do it, it's not like they're going to confess. Uh, I'm not sure I should pursue this thing with Lisa. Sounds like you two have a lot in common. Yeah, if you count insomnia, depression, irritability, flashbacks, outbursts of anger. But beyond that, uh, I don't know. So it's not you looking for an excuse to bail on a relationship and run from commitment? Why would you say that? We've talked about that issue before. It's nothing to do with the fact that I got shot. Exactly. Just because you have a new issue doesn't mean the old ones have gone away. Oh, so this isn't post-traumatic stress. This is just plain old fear of giving myself what I want. Could be a little of both. <sighs> it just seems like a really bad time to get involved. When would be a good time? All rise. Be seated. Ladies and gentlemen. It has never been the purpose of this trial to determine whether Jody Larson has been a victim of sexual abuse. It is the duty of this court, rather, to rule on whether or not Mr. and Mrs. Pruitt have completed the specific steps necessary to earn the custody of their child. Now, that being said, accusations of sexual abuse are not something that I or this court take lightly. And for that reason, I have carefully reviewed the testimony presented by Jody's psychologists, teachers, foster parents, and transcripts of interviews with Jody supplied by her attorney, Mr. Leary. I found nothing I believe to be of substance to support the views and opinions expressed earlier by Ms. Gray. It is therefore my finding that Mark and Denise Pruitt have satisfactorily completed all specific steps assigned by this court. I hereby grant revocation, Mrs. Pruitt. Ms. Gray, please make arrangements to have the child return to her mother no later than the end of today. Thank you. That's all. Mom says he took pictures of the baby at the hospital. They think it's a girl. A sister? Well, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and I get to help with everything, and Mom's going to show me how to change diapers. That's a smart mom. I'm going to feed her and sing songs to her and protect her when she sleeps. She's lucky to have someone like you. What are you going to protect her from? I don't know. Everything. 
Your mother will have to take you back to the Tanners to pick up your computer. Uh, um, I got that. And your games. Is there going to be a problem with that? No, I don't think so. Here, I have something for you. What is it? That's my business card. Here's my name and the address of the building where I work, my telephone number, just so you know where I am in case you need anything. Jody! Mommy! <laughs> I must admit, I am troubled by some evidence in this case. I have heard the confession of a child to a crime that I have trouble believing a child could physically commit. Yet, in the absence of any other evidence or explanation, I have no other choice but to take him at his word. Now, given the violent nature of this offense, particularly the degree of force required for an eight-year-old to commit such an act, I cannot adopt defense counsel's argument that Dylan be found guilty of a lesser charge. Therefore, Dylan Shepard will be committed to DCF with his initial placement at Long Lane until such time that he reaches adulthood. Your Honor. Mom? Wait. You can't take Dylan away. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Shepard. No, I came here because I thought you would throw the case out. Excuse me? Mrs. Shepard. Eight-year-old boy. I thought a juvenile judge would be sympathetic. It was wrong of me. I know. It was stupid. It was stupid and desperate, but, but I got scared and, and I panicked. Mrs. Shepard, perhaps? I never meant to hurt Molly. You have to believe me, Your Honor. She was my baby. But she wouldn't stop crying. I tried everything. I, I fed her, I changed her, I sang to her, nothing helped. She cried for hours, hours. And I was trying to make dinner and do the laundry, and Dylan had the TV up so loud, and it was too much. It was just too much. I wanted to scream. And I shook her. And it all happened so quickly. second it was over it was over Vincent home? Who shall I say is calling? I'm Lisa. Vincent, it's Lisa! I'm Donna. Vincent's roommate. Oh. We we're just roommates. I'm married. Oh. Hey, Lisa. Uh, what are you doing here? I could ask you the same thing. <laughs> it's a bit, uh, I live here. <laughs> Thanks, Donna. Nice to meet you. Same here. Um, I, uh, thought maybe you were having trouble with your phone. Or no, I, uh... Just didn't want to call me back. No, I, um, I've been really busy. I'm sorry. Yeah. Look, Vincent, I, I don't want to make this awkward for you. I, I really don't. I just had a good time, that's all, and I thought you did, too. Yeah, I did. Good. I came here to say I hope you didn't get the wrong idea. I, I'm not looking for a hero. Just a friend. That's it. <laughs> Next move's yours. Good night. Vincent Carpe Diem. Shut up. What happened? Lisa! Not so fast. Just talk to her. Lisa, I, uh, I didn't want you to get the wrong idea either. Okay, then give me the right one. I got a, I got a lot going on right now. 
um, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit distracted and I'm having a hard time just concentrating on my work. You have a commitment problem. Well, yeah, and that too. Um, look, I like you and I don't want you to get hurt, especially after all that you've been through. Vincent, I think I can handle it. So, this weekend, do you, um, you want to get some mushy food and see a quiet movie? Yes. Jamie? Tom? Don't worry, I'm not stopping you. I heard what you said, and uh, I respect your decision and your integrity. Oh, really? I think they might be an idiot. You're just being a good judge. We could use more of those. Oh, thank you. It's just that... Well, I, I really like you. And I'm sorry that we're never going to get to see if that feeling might have led somewhere. I know. I care. Letting go is it surprise. I, I didn't hear you come in. Well, where are my manners? Come and sit down and, and we can talk. How would that be? Jody, where did that blood come from? Where did you get that? Mr. and Mrs. Tanner had it. Your foster family? It was in their closet, but in a box. How did you get here, sweetie? Did your parents bring you here? My mom went to the store to buy hamburgers for dinner. She said I should stay home and rest. What about your stepfather? Was Mark at home with you? He came into my room when I was laying down. He said he was glad that I came home. He missed me. He looked at me that way. I knew it wouldn't be any different. Not for me. And not for my sister. Jody. What did you do? I told you I could take care of myself. <laughs> 